Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Please feel free to visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can connect with me on other social media platforms. Please enjoy this sports medicine video. On today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, I'm going to speak about Morton's neuroma. Morton's neuroma is also known as intermetatarsal neuroma. Morton's neuroma is misnamed. This condition is not a neuroma. A neuroma is a tumor in a nerve. This is not a tumor in a nerve. Morton's neuroma, aka intermetatarsal neuroma, is a nerve entrapment or a nerve compression syndrome. In order to understand Morton's neuroma, you have to understand the anatomy of the foot, specifically the forefoot. I have a plastic model of the foot. I'm going to go ahead and explain it. Okay, you are looking at the bottom of the foot. In medical terminology, this is called the plantar. The top of the foot is called the dorsum. The symptoms of Morton's neuroma are felt on the plantar part of the foot in the forefoot. Okay, now the anatomy, the forefoot is these five bones right here. These are the metatarsal bones and these are the toes. So what happens is that there are nerves that go in between these metatarsal bones and those nerves go into the toes. Like I said, this is a nerve compression syndrome. So the nerves in between the toes are getting compressed. That is causing pain where the nerves are getting compressed and then causing symptoms in the toes. Morton's neuroma is a common sports injury. I will see this in my office with runners and with all athletes who run. It is also more prevalent in females due to the fact that females, when they're not competing, they may wear high heels or a shoe with an elevated heel. And usually in female shoes, the front part of the shoe is narrower than it is in a man's shoe. So what happens is the heel is elevated and the foot slides down into the shoe. The front part of the shoe is narrower and it compresses the forefoot together, leading to the nerve compression. The symptoms of Morton's neuroma have an insidious onset, meaning that there is not one traumatic incident that brings it on, meaning that the onset is slow. And you start to feel the symptoms, then they may lessen, and then they occur again, and the intensity gets worse, and the frequency gets worse. So this is a condition where the onset is slow. Like I said, it has an insidious onset. And the symptoms are, like I mentioned before, felt in between the metatarsal bones and also in the toes. Now the symptoms in the toes, they can be sharp pain, burning, numbness, tingling, any type of altered sensation. Usually that is felt in the second, third, and fourth toe. And then the pain that's felt in between the metatarsals, that will be in between whichever two of these bones that the nerve is impinged. And that will be tenderness, dull, achy, even sharp pain, very tender to the touch. feels like you may have a pebble in your shoe or you're stepping on a small rock or that your sock is folded and it's putting pressure on the forefoot every time that you step. Usually these symptoms get progressively worse once they begin. Also, usually these symptoms are felt more when you're obviously standing, when you're placing pressure on it, when you're running, and they are decreased when you are resting. Most of the time, these symptoms are going to cause an altered gait. The patient may walk on the outside of the foot or they may push off differently or the gait just may be compensated in another form. Usually a compensated gait leads to other injuries. So you have to be very careful with this condition. A compensated gait for Morton's neuroma is, or for any condition, 
is a precursor for a large number of other conditions. The contributing factors of Morton seroma are extrinsic and intrinsic. Intrinsic factors are conditions in the body. Extrinsic factors are conditions outside of the body that we're doing. The intrinsic factors, the ones located in the body, are weakness in the foot muscles, especially the forefoot muscles. Also, a collapse of the transverse arch in the forefoot, hyperpronation when we step down, when we're walking, and when we're running, and when we're standing, and then also a naturally compressed forefoot. These contributing factors can lead to Morton's aroma. And then the extrinsic factors are obviously wearing shoes that don't fit right, shoes that are too tight, shoes that are compressing the forefoot together and combine that with overtraining. Overtraining is doing too much too soon combined with giving your body inadequate rest between training sessions. Prevention is key in all sports injuries. When we speak about Morton's aroma, it is definitely key. Prevention of Morton's aroma. First of all, you want to strengthen the foot muscles. The foot muscles are often neglected. I have another video that I did in Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report all about strengthening the feet. Watch that video, do those exercises. It's going to help you to strengthen your feet and that's going to help you to prevent Morton's neuroma and a plethora of other conditions. So strengthen the feet. Please strengthen the feet and wear proper fitting shoes. Strengthen your feet, wear proper fitting shoes, and then formulate a training plan that gives you adequate rest between training sessions. If symptoms do occur, you want to make sure that you take action immediately. First of all, never try to train through nerve pain. This will just make the condition worse. Modify your training. If whatever your whatever exercise or training that you were doing that brought on Morton's neuroma, eliminate that for a short period of time and find something else to do that does not put pressure on the forefoot. You're going to do yourself a huge favor. So again, please do not try to train through nerve pain. Now, some things that you can do to help yourself out. First of all, you can apply ice to the forefoot. Apply it in the plantar part of the foot, which again is the bottom part of the foot. Put the ice on for a short period of time, about 10 to 20 minutes. Make sure that you have a thin towel or a washcloth between the ice pack and the skin. Never, never apply ice directly to the skin. You can massage the foot, the forefoot. Okay. Very light pressure, never massage directly over the area of tenderness because you don't want to put pressure on that nerve. Massage around it. You can separate the bones from each other, very, very light pressure. You do not want to overdo this. Very light pressure is going to help to relax the muscles and separate the bones from each other. Also, is do passive range of motion exercises. Passive means that you're using your hands and you're moving the bones around in the foot. You're just moving the foot, moving the toes, moving the ankles. Very, very light. You do not want to overdo it. Once the symptoms start to decrease, then you can start to do or active range of motion exercises where you are moving the foot. Professional care. This is an, a serious condition. Any type of nerve compression syndrome is a serious condition. Get a, a, a evaluation from a medical professional. As a doctor of chiropractic, I see this condition in my office. Like I said, especially among runners or athletes who run. This is a condition that will get progressively worse if you do not get it taken care of. So get a professional evaluation. You may need to get some x-rays taken. Obviously, the professional evaluation is going to help to make sure that your diagnosis is Morton's neuroma because there are other conditions that may cause pain or symptoms in the forefoot. So you want to get the correct diagnosis to set you on your path of recovery. Also, with chiropractic care, 
What we do in chiropractic is we restore proper skeletal motion, and this helps to optimize nerve flow. So therefore, if you have a nerve impingement condition, seeing a doctor of chiropractic may help with that condition. The key factors in the prevention and in the later stages of the rehabilitation and recovery from Morton's aroma are strengthening the feet, strengthen the feet, especially the forefoot. The feet are so neglected. Make sure that your feet are strong and this will help you to recover from this condition. Also, wearing proper fitted shoes. Wear shoes that fit you properly and that do not compress the forefoot. Thank you so much for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report where I spoke about Morton's Neuroma. Again, please feel free to visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book. And also, please view my other videos for Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, also Two Minutes of Anatomy and Championship Fitness. I mentioned that there is a Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report where I go over foot strengthening exercises that will help you a great deal in the prevention and the recovery from Morton's aroma. Please feel free to like this video. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page. This will ensure you that you will be able to see every one of my episodes in the three different shows that I have. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for viewing today's episode. Always remember, train hard, train smart, stay injury free, formulate nutritional strategies that work for you and accomplish your